what is going on with Crosshair? Why is he not able to hit targets that he used to be able to hit with 99% accuracy? And why is this person who is supposed to have genetic mutations and be a specialist sniper no longer able to hit a fruit or even the broad side of the barn, it seems. And this last episode that we saw with the Bad Batch really opened my eyes to something that I actually struggled with and a lot of people struggle with, uh, which is performance anxiety and specifically the yips. And so I'll get into what that is if you're not familiar with it in a second. But Crosshair is no longer dealing with anything physical, or at least that was confirmed. It's neurological. It's mental. AZ was able to heal his hand as much as a droid could. And so something's going on with Crosshair mentally. Now, initially I thought, oh, well, he had a Venator basically blow his brain off with the uh, exhaust from the engines and you see the Swiss cheese on the side of his head. Maybe that's what's going on. But I actually think it's something just as simple but as hard to overcome as anxiety, specifically performance anxiety. And this is something that I ran into a lot in college. And I was a division one catcher at Washington State University. And my sophomore year, I developed the yips. And anyone who's played baseball or golf or any other sport that requires fine motor skills, you know what the yips are and you know how hard they can be to get rid of. And so my personal story is that I was so afraid of failure and I developed such bad performance anxiety that I would put two balls in my pocket when we would throw it around the horn, warming up before a game. And so if you're not familiar with what it looks like for an infield outfield at the division one baseball level. And a lot of levels will do this, but we've got the entire stadium watching us warm up. There's players on the other side of Stanford or Arizona state. And then our coaches are watching us and we're going through and doing an infield outfield. And one of the roles of the catcher in that is to throw it down to third base. And I started to develop the yips to where I would just launch it into left field or I would triple bounce it to third base. Keep in mind, this is a 90 foot throw. Division one catcher, I got recruited because I was good at throwing it to different bases and throwing runners out. And my performance anxiety got so bad. I was so afraid of failure. I was so afraid of continuing to make mistakes, which, you know, when you're young and you struggle at a college level, it's really easy to get in your own head. So I'd put two balls in my pocket because I knew that inevitably one would go into left field and then I'd be able to throw the second one to, to third as a strike. And obviously this, this didn't look good and it would just create this cycle of, oh my gosh, I can't even do simple things like throwing it to a base, throwing it to a player. And for Crosshair, he's been a sniper his entire life. He's been able to execute a task probably millions of times, maybe not millions, but at least hundreds of thousands of times. And performance anxiety in the yips specifically is something that is really hard to get over unless you get a, and this is, this is something that I picked up anecdotally from a podcast specifically talking about a professional baseball player, but you've got to have essentially the acceptance of the failure and being able to say like, it's okay. The team's got you. And that's the example that this guy was giving us. If you are maybe struggling to throw it from center field into home plate, the, the coach brought in all of the players and the entire team. And they're like, Hey, James, we've got you, man. It's okay. Like you don't have to be afraid of failure. And having that for crosshair could be what ultimately helps him in like improve and get rid of this, this anxiety, the yips that he's running into really good example of this. If you want to look at it, uh, over the course of a professional baseball player is Rick Ankiel. He was a pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals and would literally launch it over the backstop professional baseball player, MLB pitcher launching it a hundred feet from target. And so he had to actually stop playing as a pitcher, went back in the minors and developed as a hitter and then ended up having a second career. It's a fascinating story, but there's so many examples at so many levels of people not being able to make a 60 foot throw. And it's sad when you watch it because you see someone who's this, you know, paragon of ability whittling down to absolutely zero skill and it, it's this it, i say this from experience it's it's really weird to be like why can't i do this i've been able to do this so many times and it's something i actually still struggle with i've got a fear of blood and like medical kind of surgery type 
uh, environments. And so if someone's bringing up how maybe they went and had surgery and they had to cut open the stomach to do X, Y, and Z, I don't even know why I'm going down this because it's uh, not my favorite, but I'll lose motor skills of my right hand. I'm not able to actually write. I go to like a three-year-old writing level or just the ability to write my name is very hard. And my wife cracks up when she's seen this happen, but it's very much tied to the same part of the brain where it's like, there's that fear of something. And then that shuts down the perceptual motor performance. And there's actually a couple studies that I found that were super interesting where it looks at, um, you know, people who are shooting uh, penalty kicks. So in soccer, so it's been shown that threat related stimuli can serve as attractors and cause movements to deviate in their direction. And then another one says on a behavior level, anxiety may lead to changes in action readiness and create a tendency to perform emotion congruent responses. For instance, heart rate, blood pressure, breath frequency, muscle activity, and energy expenditure all increase under anxiety, causing movements to become less efficient. And I think that's exactly what I ran into. And I think that's what crosshair is running into. And I don't have a fix for crosshair. But what I think is really cool about this season, particularly, is the depth that they're going into about Crosshair and Omega's relationship and that they introduce something as deep as the yips or performance anxiety. And they're talking about meditation, which is something that was transformational for me. And the, we see that in this last episode of uh, episode eight. And so I would be really excited if they see this through and this ends up being the journey that Crosshair goes on because Star Wars is always at its best when it's talking about real life lessons and using these characters and using these stories to teach us lessons as the viewer about how meditation can help with, you know, mental health or anxiety or performance anxiety, because that's what it really did for me. That's what it potentially could do for Crosshair. And when you look at some of the best moments of Star Wars, I go back to Yoda in Empire Strikes Back. He's speaking a lot of ancient wisdom, a lot of stuff from um, Eastern philosophy, yoga. And if we can see that as a subplot in the Bad Batch, I think that that's really good writing. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. And if you're someone who's running into the yips or performance anxiety, uh, I think a big part of it is just accepting that failure is part of the process and try and create a container with yourself and with other people where you're okay to fail. And if you can go and fail and realize that the failure you're afraid of isn't as uh, big and scary as maybe your deep subconscious is making it, then you can start to make steps forward. And so I just want to make this video as one, a theory for Crosshair, two, to give anyone who's dealing with this a little bit of encouragement. You got this. Stick with it. This is CT3939 of the Trooper Transmission signing out. Hit that subscribe button. Drop a like. Drop a comment. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.